Hi, uh, today's talk is we following on the previous talk, we had an introduction uh, to building management, building uh, team management and team management. Today we're talking, I'm going to talk about building your team. Uh, this section I'm going to do it in two talks to keep it short, don't want to make a very long video for you. Uh, first section, I will be talking about setting the objectives for your team, different types of teams you can have, and the team role theory. Uh, second talk, so next video on this would be looking at the type of uh, team roles. Uh, we're going to look at the skill set requirement for your team and what's the selection procedure for that. Now, uh, starting on the first part of the talk, uh, before uh, starting building your team and what I'm talking about formation of the team. Uh, you, if you remember the introductory uh, talks we did, by now you should have from your company or the organizers, organizers or other stakeholders, uh, what's their objective, what the objective they are set up, set out for this team, what is it supposed to do, what's the resources available, being finance, manpower, physical resources, all those things has to have been agreed upon. And the time frame. We need the time frame, how much time we have to form the team and what's the time frame for the team to perform the required task. So hopefully those are done. Now we are going to look at the, uh, the objectives of the team itself. Now, I hope my colleagues would put these Im images up here, uh, which is a hierarchy of goals. Uh, we're looking at uh, starting with the company objectives and goals. What's the company vision, the company objectives, being sales or market share or whatever is overall objectives of company. And uh, this is a specific team which is supposed to be formed. What's the objective of that team? What is Support what, what the team supposed to do is the marketing team, sales team, production team, uh, whatever is the nature of that team, obviously should have an objective, very clear objective, which would feed into reaching the overall company objective. And the, you will see on the on the image here the critical success factor CSF. So what are those things? You know, the, we want to know it from our managers, those who are setting this uh, team up. What are those critical success factors which would determine the success of the team and also key performance indicators? That is how they're going to judge us. I mean, what are the, uh, the, the way they're going to ju judge us? Once we got that, then we're going to go to team objective. We're going to use one of the system called the SMART objectives. It's very simple. S stands for specific, M for measurable, A achievable, R relevant, T time bound. Which obviously every, when you have objective for whatever reason, being a team objective or your personal objective in doing something, you want to make it specific. You have to know what is it that you want to achieve. Also, we have to be able to measure it, and so we know if we have achieved it or not. Achievable, A stands for achievable, is uh, stupid to have uh, objectives which nobody can achieve it, you know, the, the set the goals high. No, your goals have to be achievable. And it has to be relevant to, obviously, the, o the overall objective of company. There's no point to do something which has got not, nothing to do with the goals of the company. And uh, time bound, you have to have a time frame for it. You know, you can't say, God willing, we will be able to achieve it. No, there should be a time frame. So those has to be set. And once we set it for our team, these are overall objectives of team. What we have to achieve, we get an agreement with the stakeholders, the company directors, whoever is setting up and paying for this team. And then we have got our objectives. Once we got the objectives, then we're going to move into the, uh, what are the, t I mean, from an outset, we would know what type of team we are talking about. These are the possible type of teams we can come across. Working teams. Working teams are the most common teams. Every company 
uh, organize their manpower uh, around the functions of company like marketing team, finance team, HR department, HR team, human resources team, uh, sales team, distribution team. So these are working teams are usually around functions of company, most common ones, and their objectives obviously are feeding into the overall, achieving overall objective of company. Next one is special purpose team. This is a team which is, we put it together to do a very specific job. And they're usually very specialist in what they're gonna do. Uh, they are put together, if you are within a company, usually resources are called within the company. They do the task they want, and they are expected to do, and they dismantle, and they, they, they go away. Uh, they are good in, let's say we want to start with an advertising campaign and we want to brainstorm for a product, for example. These are, you know, usually we use it for that. Multifunctional teams, these are the teams which are uh, looking at broad area of things. They have got different specialists, they get together. They are very good in problem solving multi-dimensional problems. So you've got legal experts and marketing experts, contractors, you know, whatever it is. So they can put their mind together and address a specific issues. And self-directed team. These are teams which, uh, not very common, not in business anyway. Uh, they, they don't have necessary leadership. They are a group of motivated people, volunteers working together, uh, it can be in charity. Uh, team leaders in these companies, there's no selected team leaders, usually by popularity somebody become a team leader, right, and by sort of management skills or whatever. Uh, music bands usually are like that, you know, the teams put together like that. But management teams, these are the uh, board of directors, uh, top level management of the company. They usually look at the strategic issues of the company, where is they going to take it, and uh, they work on creating objectives for teams we were talking about. Then you've got troubleshooting teams. Troubleshooting teams, they are the ones which, as the name suggests, they troubleshoot, they look at possible situations with companies or something can go wrong and uh, like a devil advocate so they, they look at those sort of things that free thinkers usually they're not good teams to to get somewhere they are good teams to just shoot problems at something uh, another very common one is project teams for project management companies have got projects they put group of people together with expertise to fulfill the requirement of that a specific project can be building a building, writing a software or so. Uh, and once they have achieved it, they dismantle. A final one, uh, task force. The task force seems usually they are put together group of experts to deal with emergencies, disaster situations. If it's in a company, you've got major disaster or problem which you put your best man together to deal with it. It can be natural disaster, something happening and the country would put their best people together to tackle that uh, specific problem. These are type of, I mean, sort of teams you can come across and you put yourself in one of these things. And each one is, has got different sort of uh, dynamics, uh, like working teams that are long, they, they would be going for a long time, life of the company, and uh, the people, they know each other very well, but like task force is something put up together very quickly, experts from different places coming in, and they have to gel very quickly, there is no time. So that each type has got a different uh, dynamics for itself. Now, I think this is the last subject in this talk I'm going to talk about, and that's it. The theme rule theory. The theme rule theory, it comes from, based on the, uh, most of you are familiar with personality test, which it shows, you know, what, what's that individual's uh, behavior or things and uh, what makes them to take and uh, what are they good at, what are they not good at. And that can be extended to, to the team role, uh, to, to, to a team behavior and team 
can be obviously has got the behavior based on their members and their management and leadership, which behave in similar sort of uh, way. And uh, we, we are primarily concerned with the performance and the personal growth of each team member as they build the team. Uh, next, I think there is one final slide, I guess. Now, with the uh, Timberwolf theory, there is there are the key principles. I mean, the, the, the objective is creating the best performance out of the team. And the key principles for a, a high productivity sort of team is the team should have, team members should have adapt, good adaptation. Uh, that means when you give them a role, they will adapt to it, they will take it, they would uh, build themselves around it. Uh, the, the synchronization, synchronized, good synchronization, it means the team members would play together as a good team player and they fill in uh, each other's short, shortcomings. And finally, the stretch. And the stretch we are talking about here that people would go out of their comfort zone and they will try to do their best and they uh, go to the unknown to achieve the objective of the team. And that, that's, that's the stretching part of it. Now against that, the low productive team, which I haven't put it on my slides, but I'm just going to tell you what it is. Uh, these are the teams which they use a, the overuse a team role. That means I choose a role because I like that role, not because that's the best role for me or the best role to play in the team. I just like it. And, uh, and I try to avoid it. So synchronization, we talked about earlier for productive, high productivity team. Uh, they, they just try to avoid it. Oh, I don't like it. I, uh, I wouldn't do that. And so there is these gaps get created within the team structure. And finally, without, instead of uh, stretching themselves to the comfort zone, they get into competition with each other on a personal level. And uh, rather thinking about the team and what's the best for the team, they start uh, becoming self-centered and looking at what is the best for them or think the best for them. Uh, that's the th theory of how the teams work and the type of teams we have got. I just finally going to go quickly over these uh, five formation phases of team, which is a training section. That's the beginning. People get to know what's happening, what they have to do. They cover their shortcoming. The storm section is the initial part of the game where the team is starting working. It's exciting. Everybody excited about it. The performance is quite high. People really get into it. Then obviously you can keep that high level of sort of performance going. We get to the normalization. Everything becomes you know, sort of yeah, it's the same every day, and that that's where your performance start uh, going down. And uh, now the team manager would know about different phases and try to manage the team behavior and try to get towards the goal very quickly before we get to this uh, low performance section and what we call dissolution, the end of the teamwork. So uh, these are different phases, so you have to make sure you get your team through these phases at the right time and you don't let the uh, the excitement to go down too early. But you can keep it going forever. I mean, that's, that, that's why within the time frame you have to achieve it. Now, that's the end of this talk. The next part of the team building, I would going to look at the, the skill set you need for your team, the selection process, and so on. Talk to you later. See you.